Yes, sir. Can we start? Yeah. Good to go. Yes, sir. So first of all, good evening and thank you for joining us today. We are here to have a conversation with a seasoned professional in the field of finance and taxation. Our guest today has over 20 years of experience in all aspects of accounting and finance management and is currently serving as an AVP of finance in growth-oriented organization. Their expertise in managing income tax, withholding tax, and their proven abilities in compliance with various governing bodies make them an ideal candidate to discuss the 2023-24 budget and its impact on the financial industry. With their hands-on management style and experience in financial planning, I am confident that they will provide valuable insights on the budget. So without further, let's welcome C.A. Rupesh, sir. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dhawal. And at the outset, you know, warm welcome to all the participants who have, you know, taken their time out, you know, to have a discussion and on the budget 2023. Uh, you know, I would like to thank at the outset the Rotary Club of Mumbai Marvel and the Rotary Club to, you know, invite me and speak on the budget 2023 from the perspective. Professor, you are on mute. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible now? Perfect. So I would, uh, you know, like to thank you, Rotary, Rotary Club of Mumbai Marvel, and the also the Rotary Club to give me this opportunity to share my views on this budget. As you know, I have been already informed that, you know, to keep it, you know, very simple and lucid from the angle of the common man, rather than getting too much technicality on the legal side. So uh, I will, you know, try to make, you know, the best efforts to make it as simple as possible. However, I would also like to tell all the participants to feel free to put all your question in the Q&A box or the chat box. And at the end of my presentation, I will make all attempt to answer the questions to the best of my ability. So let me share my screen. In the moment, the screen is available on your screen. My PPT just give me the green signal. Yes, sir. PPT is visible. Visible now. Thank you very much. So, friends, if you see that a very first thing in the current budget, what is the first impression about this current budget? Because before the budget, you know, was announced, there was all sort of news in the media about you know whether it is a populist budget because it is just before the election. For the benefit of the participants, I would like to say that whenever there is going to be the election in the country, right? then just before the election, say in this year it is May 24, so February 24, there will not be any budget as this is the requirement of the Constitution of India. And Hindi normally we say Achar Sahita will be applicable. So budget 2020-23 in February, is the last budget, so to say, is the last opportunity before the election for the government to announce their certain policies and certain programs. So before the budget in media, everybody was expecting that this is going to be a very populist budget and you know, government will keep in mind the elections, vote bank, etc, etc. However, you know, when I read through the finer prints of the budget, my first impression is that it was not like that. Rather, it was a fine balance. It was a fine balance between the, uh, you know, the growth as well as the fiscal deficit. So government has actually, you know, unlike in the past, has chosen and wisely chosen to do a fine balance between the growth of the nation and the balance and managing the fiscal deficit of the country. And according to me, this is a very very good move by the government where the economics has prevailed over the politics, right? So why I say so, let us look at in the subsequent slides to come to understand. So whenever there is a budget, we first have to understand the big picture. You know, what is the big picture in this budget about our country and the economy? Let us look at this particular slide. Now in this slide, you know, in the very first column is the data given for 
current financial year that is the financial year 22 and 23 now for the benefit of all those people who are not from the commerce background that means the year which is going to end in march 23 is the first column then the second column is for the next financial year 23 24 for which the budget is announced currently now let us look at this number and see the story behind the numbers if you really see the fiscal deficit which is projected you know which we likely to touch the fiscal deficit of 17.55 trillion rupees these are numbers in rupees right and which is likely to go up in the next financial year to 17.87 trillion rupees and if you look at the fiscal deficit percentage it is 6.4 percent in the current year and 5.9 percent in the next financial year for which the budget is announced now what does that mean actually that government after the covid right the government is during the covid time has spent heavily and where they have not much bothered about the fiscal consolidation and the fiscal deficit of the country but as per the FRBM Act, where there is a responsibility on the government to manage the fiscal deficit of the country, they have actually announced that in the next year, this will come down to 5.9% and in the next two years, then it will come down to 4.5%. So they are trying to consolidate. So there is a fair degree of the fiscal consolidation is going there. Right? If we look at the GDP, of, you know, if you divide 7.55 divided by 6.4%, a simple mathematics, you will get the GDP of the country as, as 274 lakhs, right? That is 274 trillions. And which is for the next financial year is 302 trillion. So the nominal growth rate of 10.5% from 274 to 302 nominal growth is 10.5%. Now for the benefit of the, you know, the people for whom these jargons are new, what do we mean by the nominal GDP growth rate? Because GDP is actually is understood in two parts the real gdp plus inflation equal to nominal gdp so this 10.5 percent is along with the inflation so say roughly the projection is say six six and a half percent going to be the real gdp growth then say four four and a half percent will be the inflation in the country and the nominal gdp will be 10.5 percent so in nominal terms we are expecting that our economy will grow by 10.5 percent in nominal terms and in the real terms that is adjusted for inflation is around 6.5 percent which is a fairly good rate because in the world if you see the india is one of the few country which is the fastest growing economy in the world then if you convert that into the dollar you know by taking the dollar exchange rate of 8.5 or something the current gdp is coming to 3.34 trillion dollar which will be projected to go to 3.69 trillion dollar and again by the same mathematical definition it is 10.5 percent real gdp growth and the government has also projected the revenue of the tax collection in the same rate of 10.4 percent now why this is very very important because if the country is going to grow by 10 10 and half percent then any aggressive target which is beyond 10, 12, 11, 13 is an aggressive target, which is always a question. Now, government is very prudent and they have projected that their revenue collection, as far as tax is concerned, will be in line with the nominal GDP. That means your income tax collection, both personal tax and corporate tax, from your indirect taxes like GST and the customs, all an excise for certain products is all put together will grow by 10.4%, which is a very, very fair assumption right then the, the the real thing in this budget actually is about capital expenditure now what do you mean by capital expenditure capital expenditure are very long-term investments in the country which is an enabler for the growth of the economy for example construction of road railway port airport etc etc so the capital expenditure the last budget was estimated as 7.28 trillion rupees Whereas in this budget, in historical high figure of 10 trillion, that means 10 lakh crore, that means 37 percent jump the government is putting. And that is why they have given the name of this budget is a budget of the Amrut Kaal. That means if you try to understand in the language of the common man, if you are a businessman and if you do a capital expenditure in your factory, you put up new plant, new machinery, 
new line of uh, productions, new land, new factory, then this will give you in the long term more businesses, more production, more sale and, and the more income. Similarly, when we talk about country as a whole, when the country is planning, the government is planning to spend 10 trillion rupees, you know, across the board into the infrastructure development and in the capital expenditure, this will lead to the huge, huge growth in the economy. Hence, we say that this capital investment is a driver of the growth in the job in the country. And this is the number, right? These are all budgets. As a very, very agile and uh, you know, what you say that uh, very, very prudent citizen of the country and the Jagrut Nagrik, we should keep an eye on this, whether, how this money is spent and, and whether the projects are on time because this is what the government provides, that is the central government provides. But actually, as per the constitution of India, the uh, certain expenditures are in the hands of the state government and they have certain executions uh, responsibility. And whether states are also you know, performing their duties or not, that is something we have to demand as a citizen of the country. And that is where you know, actual success of the, our economy lies. Now, it leads me to the one more question that where does the government get entire money, right? Because they have projected the revenues at the rate of 10.5%. Now, just have a look at this particular slide and the summary here. They have projected their tax collection at 23.3 trillion. They have certain non-tax revenue like 3 trillion and some other revenue like dividend and interest and you know, certain other receipts and disinvestments, blah, blah, blah. This is a 0.84 trillion. So all to all, their income will be 27.15 trillion. Right? So their income, in short, the income of the government will be 27 trillion. That means 27 lakh crore. But let's look at this expense side of the government. The government revenue expenditure will be 24 trillion. So you roughly see, you know, from this line item, right? Their re revenue expense will be 24 trillion. Their capital expenditure as we have seen 10 trillion and their interest payment, just roughly see it's even more than capital expenditure. So their interest expense will be 10.79 trillion. So the entire expenditure profile of this government for the next financial year will be 45 trillion rupees, sorry, 45 trillion rupees. Whereas our income going to be 27 trillion. So in Suddha Hindi, we say, how much is it? How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? So 45 minus 27 means 17.87 is the fiscal deficit of the country. This is the deficit you know, which our country is going to, has projected for the next financial year. And this is going to be met through the, you know, this borrowing program of the government. So government will go and borrow this much of money from the bond market, from the, uh, uh, you know, certain FDIs, from certain amounts from the foreign receipts, NRI receipts, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is the impact of this as we have to understand? If this fiscal deficit is not controlled, why it will not be controlled? Either these collections go under down or any of these income goes below the estimates or these expenditure overshoot, maybe because of certain unforeseen circumstances like COVID or another, you know, certain oil price goes up and et cetera, et cetera. Then these borrowings will go up. And when these borrowings goes up, it will have an inflationary impact in the economy, right? And also the interest rates in the economy. And higher the interest rate goes up, higher the inflation goes up, it impacts actually the profitability of the corporates and also the life of the common man. So as a very, as a layman, you know, you really have to understand where this deficit is headed. If it really go out of the control and cross more than 5.9%, right, even the rating of the country can come down and international rating of the country can come down. It can also impact the inflow of the foreign capital into the country, right? And this is the breakup, you know, of all the expenditures, which, you know, I will try to give you, you know, the, the summary of this year. Right. So if you're more interested, then you can go deep into, you know, the budget documents. Right. Then you will get a fairly good idea. Right. So what really the you know important thing which we have to keep in mind here is the revenue expenditure profile 
other than interest expense. Very if you see the revenue expenditure, like amount they spent on subsidy, administrations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, has actually gone down by 3.7 percent. Now, this is something you know which put me to a question mark because given the election year, it is very interesting thing to watch. Because in the election year, if you really reduce this expenditure and spend on the only on the capex. The common man, if they are going to suffer because of this welfare measure, amount which you spent on these revenue expenditure subsidies and Manrega and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it might impact the vote back of the current party, current ruling party. So it is very interesting to watch. I really don't know what will be the verdict into the Lok Sabha election. But but in the 140 billion people, 140 crore you know, population, right? The common man don't understand economics that much. For them, meeting the two ends on a daily basis is the supreme or the prime importance, right? Hence, this is going to become a very, very interesting experiment by the government, which we should watch and see how it pans out, right? Now, if you really see where all these, you know, ministry-wise expenditure. Now, if you really see the expenditures, these are 45 crore of budget, right? 45 lakhs crore budget higher expenditures are given to the defense sector, right? 1.5% has gone up. Then road and transport, and third is railway. These are top three allocations. These three ministry has got top three. So what is the message from this slide? That government is a very, very serious about, you know, the, social, uh, the uh, national security and the amount they are spending on defense has gone up. But if you really compare in a relative terms, as compared to the previous years, in relative terms, as a percentage of the GDP, it has gone down. In absolute term, it has gone up from 5.84 to 5.93. But in terms of percentage of the GDP in a relative terms, it has gone down. Now that really puts forward a very, very important logical question. Why it has gone down? Now, if you really go deep and read the budget document, it tells that the government is actually slowly and steadily reducing the new entrant of the manpower into the workforce, into the military force. Now, on the one side of the coin, it looks a very dangerous thing when your strength of the military goes down. But at the same time, understanding from what is today going on, into the Ukraine and Russia war and some other part of the country or part of the world, the today's war are not fought by the man, but more by the technology. And use of certain technology, drone, use of certain robotics, you know, the machines are fighting nowadays more than man. And the government has allocated within this 5.93 a very substantial amount towards the towards the development of the technology and certain sophisticated weapons and also for import of certain weapons, right? So that in future, the, our reliance on the, on the uh, import of the weapons goes down and we have our own, you know, in-house indigenized weapons available and, and the robots available. Now, why I'm saying so? Because if you really see what has happened into the Russia-Ukraine war, the US and the European country has actually told that Ukraine that aap aage bodo, hum, hum, aapke, aapke hai. and you will surprise to know when the Ukraine started fighting the war, the all the arms and munitions which the America has provided to the Ukraine that has been consumed within one week. That has been consumed within one week. And that entire one week which consumption takes total 12 months for America to reproduce. So you understand that the amount of the arms and ammunition required, then Ukraine requested for, for Daru, Daru, Gola, Barut, Goli, yes, sabki jarurat padti hai war. So when Ukraine demanded that we need further ammunition, America said, boss, humko to aur bara mahina lagega. Now when then the other NATO member has supplied certain immunations to the Ukraine. Now that has actually 
put the certain other nations like Taiwan into a thought process that agar agar ye hal America ka hai aur kal China ne hamare pe war kar diya to hum aam immunization kaha se lai and same thing also other nations have also understood that how long you can rely on an external partner to have the arms and munitions. So the Indian government also realized. So they have rightly decided to move towards the self-reliant Atma Nirbhar, even in terms of arms and munitions, and also in terms of robotics and certain drone and certain technological developments. And the, and the government is allocated on those parts rather than only on the on the manpower salaries because they have understood that future wars will be fought by the machines, robots, and the drones, and Gula Baruto Chaye. And that is where the tactical or you can say a uh, strategic move has made by this government, and which I really appreciate. Which I really appreciate. As far as road transport and railway is concerned, if you really see this goes a long way, this two expenditure goes a long way in improvement of the logistics infrastructure into the country. If India has to really has to grow, then infrastructure has to be in place. And if the infrastructure has to be in place, then a good road, ports, and the railway system has to be in place. And the government has given a huge allocation. If you really see on railway, 48% extra allocation has gone in this year. Now, as an investor, you know, rightly, let's change our lenses from common man to an investor. If you are an investor, you should be, you should get a very clear message from where the next phase of growth will come if you really want to invest into certain good sector. And that is where the, you know, this road, transport, logistics in the railway sector going to be a very, very important sector to keep an eye looking at this kind of allocations in this budget, right? Correct? And then, if you really see uh, even the JAL department, right? This allocation has gone up by 31%. Ministry of JAL, right? Now, as an investor, what do you have to understand? The government want that the water connection should reach to the last mile, to the remote locations even in the country. For this, as an investor, how you have to think, apart from welfare of the people and apart from the good standard quality standard of life of the people is concerned, there is a huge opportunity for the investor or a businessman here, especially those company who are into the piping business, who are into the, you know, pipe business or, or certain other accessories in the area of, you know, this area in the related with the water, water sanitation companies and all these things. There is a huge, huge requirement and huge opportunity over there, right? So these are some of the important messages, whether you see here, food and public distribution, 30% less allocations. Now, India is a poor country and the, you know, we still we give certain grain every month free of charge to the poor people below the poverty line. My channel check into the remote area tells me that still per member in the family in the below poverty line, 30 kg of gehu chawals are still distributed. Now, in the, because that was since this carrying on since the COVID times and still continue. Now, in spite of that, there is a 30% less allocations, right? Because these also include certain subsidies also. Now, why this is possible? Because the direct benefit transfer and the technology use where leakage in the system is gone, right? And that is why even the, these experiments so successful in India, that world is also recognizing the, the leverage of the digital technology by the Indian government, right? And this is where we should really be proud of as an Indian, as an Indian, right? Let us deep dive into some of this, some of this data point, right? As we have already seen that, you know, the defense and, you know, these things where we have seen the huge, huge allocations, right? But what is the message from this slide? The government is spending is one of the few levers which is working in the economy. That means the capital expenditure by the government is one of the few lever or rather the most important lever which is working in our economy, right? And, but because of the election year, right? I suspect that though they have projected less revenue expenditure, it might go up because it is a going to be an election year, right? Maybe they have in the budget might provided less, but there might compulsion come 
right? There, because of the you know uh, election year, they might provide for more revenue expenditure, which might have a negative impact on the fiscal deficit of the country. And that is where we need to be very, very careful. And we have to see you know, what is going to be the impact on the interest rates, right? Let us look at some of the scheme-wise allocation, right? Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, right? Affordable housing scheme, right? Where only 3% higher allocation has gone as compared to the last year. So government agencies bahut dhol pitte hai, hai na? Kya affordable housing karna hai, ye karna hai. But if you really look at allocation, nothing much has been done, right? It is more or less constant, right? And uh, I had an opportunity to, on the budget day, to speak on one of the national TV channel. And there I have raised this question that agar aapko vake mein garib logo ke liye ghar ko affordable rakhna hai, if you really want to keep house affordable, then you really have to reduce the GST rate on the cement. Many of you might be aware that cement actually attract 28% GST, which is the highest. And if the cement is 28% tax at the GST, how a house can become an affordable? And to my surprise, today I read in the newspaper on 18th of February, GST council is meeting and they are very serious about to revisit the rate of cement, GST rate of cement on this council meeting. And I'm keeping my finger crossed whether if they really reduce it, this will be definitely a good news. And in the intention and the action is you know, actually match. I am very eager to see that decision on 18th of February. Correct? If you really look at, you know, Jal Jeevan program, yes, government is very serious. Right, their 27% is higher allocation has gone. Right, Manrega, very, very interesting 32% reduction. Right, now I am very skeptical when there is an election, even few states are going into the election in 23. In 24, we have a Lok Sabha elections. Whether it's a politically right thing to do, right, even the last budget also, we have seen the reduction. You've seen the reduction in the Manrega. Even in the current budget also, we have seen the reduction in the Madrega. This has a direct impact on the rural area, on the employment of certain persons, certain laborers. So, so this might prove politically suicidal. Right? I am very eager to watch because of this one item where the availability of the job to the people in the rural area might get impacted. Whether it is going to impact the vote bank or not, it's only time will tell. Right? On education, government is very, very serious, right? And they have actually increased allocation by 19.4%, right? If you really look at, you know, guarantee emergency credit line for MSME sector, right? Medium, small enterprise, government is very serious. And if re really India has to grow, they have to take care of the Lagu Udyog. They have to take care of the MSME sector, micro, small and medium enterprise. And for them, for availability of the line of credit, Right, which is guaranteed by the government of India, right, has gone up by 34%. And this is really, really a very good, very good move by the government. Intention is very good. But as all of you know, the devil lies in the detail and in the executions. Whether the people and the agencies, government agencies down the line and the banks are actually implementing this in the right spirit or not, that is very, very important. But intention is definitely an excellent intention, right? And then Swachh Bharat Mission, right, 74%, right? That is also a very good because if the, we pay a lot of attention to the hygienic things and the cleanliness of the country, it play a huge, huge positive role on the health of the common man. And that is something which is a very, very good long-term impact, right? Reform link distribution scheme, right? So 101%, but on amount-wise, it is not that. It's okay because this is basically for you know, for the uh, distributions of certain uh, uh, grains and certain food stuff to the people in the remote area or the below poverty, right? So these slides, right? What are the big typical item? Is capex. This budget is all about capex, 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 right? Why? Because for with the capex, they we have a long term growth, investments into the country, job creations. And actually, eventually, we become a manufacturing hub. 
up till now india was being excellent into the service sector but we have actually missed the you know the manufacturing boom and the china has actually went ahead of india as far as manufacturing is concerned so government has realized that and they want to actually want to become a factory of the world right a manufacturing hub in the world they also want to have we already have a very good age as far as service sector is concerned now if we really want to become a manufacturing hub government needs to provide certain enablers and these enablers in terms of capital expenditure in terms of logistic infrastructure in terms of roads in terms of highways ports everything so that actually the cost of the logistics will come down more people will have a job because projects are announced through the pli schemes lot of investments are coming into the country as all of you know that in as far as the mobile production is concerned we are one of the lowest producer of mobile the cost of production of mobile in india is less than that of in china today there are components are also manufactured in india also lot of investments are coming into india apple is also being manufactured in india and exported from india even the certain accessories of the uh, apples are now started manufacturing in india and we started exporting that so that kind of an investment comes straight benefit is employment generation and when the employment is getting generated disposable income of the people goes up and when the disposable income of the people goes up actually the consumption people will demand more goods and services and then you provide the water and electricity to the last mile into the country they will actually demand more products so it will again give boost to the msme sector and other investments into the country and that virtuous cycle will lead to the you know the 6.5 to 7% growth into the economy so that's why i say that this budget is nothing but all about capex capex and capex because these are all the multiplier benefits but at the same time whatever there in the budget we cannot take it on the face value or we cannot assume that this will happen so things may go you know derail things might derail or may may go off the track hence it is very important to track apart from the government capex the capex by the private sector because in an economy we have a two type of capex right the first capex is by the government in the then it is followed by the capex by the private sector now please understand when the private sector will do the capex because the nature of the capex of the government is pure intention is not to make profit the pure intention is to add enablers for the growth of the economy right when they do road when they do construction of road railway port airport power plant etc etc the primary objective is to and en put enablers in place for the growth of the economy but in case of private sector the nature of the capex is purely driven by the business decision it should make a business sense for the private sector in a very very simple language a businessman will go for capex only when it make a business sense for him right and a business sense will make for him only when it's become a profitable for him it becomes profitable only when there is a demand is more than supply that is a first condition then only he will put additional factor second condition is his existing capacity should be fully utilized or at least 75 to 80 percent utilization should be there right if if the demand for the goods in my sector is say 35000 metric ton and entire sector has or say a company has say 60000 of metric ton capacity and today they are utilizing only 25 30000 capacity in order to meet balance 25 35 they will not put up the factory there will be no capex right so why because in media we keep reading and understanding that you know government capex will happen then it will be followed by the private sector capex and all this but we really have to be careful and have to see whether these two conditions are satisfied when the demand is more than supply and the existing capacity utilization is at least more than 75% then only businessman will come forward and carry out the or implement the private sector capex and when that private sector capex comes into the picture the country will in truly sense will get a true growth into the economy because these are structural things and private sector capex depends on lot of stuff the enablers in the infrastructure government provides certain clearances you know where the low 
red tapism and bureaucracy is low, efficient fiscal policies by the government, tax benefits given by the government, right? Apart from the demand sides, demand side factors. This plays a huge role, and this is what we have to track as an investor or as a common man or as a businessman, right? And simply should not buy anything or anything which you read or listen to the electronic media or the print media. Right now, having talked about this big picture, let us come down little micro level and see income tax, whether there are any benefits for the common man, right? Let us look at for the common man, for individual, HUF, association of person, body of individual, right? They have provided now new tax region. Now, in simple terms, a core naya calculation ka system aapko diya gaya. Usme aap bola gaya hai ki aap, if your income is up to 7 lakhs, you will not require to pay any tax because a calculation by default is such that up to 7 lakhs, you will not supposed to pay any tax. You can consult your CA, then he will actually help you out to understand all detailed nuances for this. But the message is that if you choose to go under this new regime of tax, if you are earning up to 7 lakhs, you are not required to make any investments anywhere else, PPF, LIC, NPS, housing loan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You are not supposed to claim any benefits, even in spite of that, up to 7 lakhs of your income, no tax. In the old scheme, right, the basic exemption limit was 2.5 lakhs. And up to 5 lakhs, some rebates are available. And then when you make investments into PPF and BPS and housing loan interest, all put together, you know, up to 6, 7 lakh rupees, you were able to claim. But there was compulsion on you to do the forced saving. So that compulsion is not, not there. Second thing about this new scheme, you have to understand that this has compulsorily become a default scheme. That means intention of the government is that you should go for this new scheme. So they have made it default. Now, what does that mean for a common man? That when you go for filing your income tax return, the website of the income tax will first give you this default scheme. And you have an option whether you want to choose this scheme or you want to choose the old scheme. If you don't take any action, then by default, the system or website will take you to the new scheme and you will be fall under the new scheme. That is the meaning of default scheme. So you have to be very careful before you file your return, consult your CA, sit with him and understand your calculation, whether old scheme is beneficial to you or a new scheme is beneficial. And explicitly you have to choose on the website that I want to go for old scheme or a new scheme. Right? If you fail to do that exercise, then by default, you are into the new scheme. And you have to understand that for many people, still old scheme is beneficial. So do not just blindly read in the paper and say, ke mere liye to naya scheme hi hai to main wo kar leta. Please consult your CA, do your calculation and consciously choose this. Right? And but what is the intention of the government behind this, apart from these calculations and all these things? That government says that up till now, people used to do investments in order to save taxes, right? So this taxation system was such that government used to tell that if you want to save your taxes, put 1,50,000 into PPF, LIC, NSC, etc., etc. Additional 50,000 into the national pension scheme, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So by force you have to save two lakhs rupees. So government used to used to tell you, Baba, आपको tax बचाना है तो इसमें आप invest करो. जब आप वहाँ invest कर देते हो, तो वो पैसा आपका long term के लिए जाम हो जाता है. That is not available to you for consumption because PPF is 15 years, LIC is also in a long term policies, etc. Etc. NPS till retirement. अब government बोलता है, अरे Baba, आप मेरे चक्कर में मत पड़ो. आपका पैसा है. You decide what you want to do with your money. Because 7 lakhs tak mein aapko tax nahi charge kar. So mere chakkar mein mat poda aur mere chakkar mein aap yeh tension mat lo ke mujhe yaha invest karna hi karna hai. Right? Up to 7 lakhs, you are free. Right? 
because government wants that it is your money you decide what is the best investments for you just because of income tax do not invest anywhere else forcefully the tax cut burden mat and also government wants that you actually instead of putting money into the bank account or into the savings right either you invest productively or else you use that money in consumption government chahti hai ki aap consumption karo jab aap consumption karte ho to demand badhti hai डिमांड बढ़ती है तो और बिजनेस होता है तो और प्रोडक्शन आता है और प्रोडक्शन आता है नए प्रोजेक्ट्स आते हैं नए लोगों को और जॉब मिलती है तो गवर्नमेंट चाहती है कि हम अब ये जो पुरानी थॉट प्रोसेस थी उससे बाहर निकल के हम अब कंजम्पन वाली पैटर्न में चले जाए ताकि कंट्री के अंदर ये एक बहुत बड़ा इन्वेस्टमेंट का साइकिल चालू तो दैट वॉज द थॉट प्रोसेस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बिहाइंड दैट एंड दैट इज द एंगल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट as a tax peer we really have to see which scheme is beneficial to us is this clear so as far as in new scheme the slabs has changed up to 3 lakhs no tax 3 to 6 6 to 9 and 9 to 12 right and 12 and above so there are you know at 3 3 lakhs rupees they have provided different slab rates whereas in the old regime there is no change same slabs continues which in the previous year as far as standard deduction is concerned in the new regime right salary employee will get standard deduction of 50000 which is a very good news for the salary employees right if you are retired person and you have a family pension then you can claim 15000 rupees as a standard deduction up to 15000 right there are some good news for the people who are retired or people who are senior citizens right for them senior citizen saving scheme is available previously they are they are allowed to invest up to 15 lakhs that limit is now gone up to 30 lakhs so they can invest up to 30 lakhs and their rate of interest are also quite good rate of interest and uh, uh, because current increase in the uh, inflations and the interest rates the senior citizens can actually take a benefit of this particular scheme they can go to the post office or they can go to the national bank nationalized bank and can open the account on quarterly basis they will get the interest income which is a good move post office mi scheme means monthly income scheme which is also a lot of retired people prefer right for their regular income there previously the limit was up to 4.5 lakhs which has again increased to 9 lakhs so that is also a good move right then very good news for the hnis that is the high net worth individuals who are very rich people right so these people used to pay surcharge on their taxes at 37% right if their income is above 5 crore now that surcharge is brought down to 25% so their effective tax rate will come down now you will say sir abhi bade logo se to tax kam kar raha hai usko to badhana chahiye tha right but it is not like that we really have to look at from different lenses why government is doing that because this hni is and very rich people are also instrumental in doing lot of productive activity in the country also which also give lot of employment opportunity to the, to the people in india because oh. these tax rates was very high these people prefer to stay out of india in dubai singapore and all these things where rate of tax was little less than india so what happens apart from brain drain capital drain was used to happen outside india and they used to create a base in singapore in hong kong in dubai all those kind of country and carry out all operations from there and manage the business in india for example a fund manager who manage his operations from dubai or from singapore and operations are actually doing you know investment activity in india but entire thing is managed from outside india so whatever the opportunity was there is not for the people in india but for the people who stay outside there so now having done this thing there is no tax arbitrage and these people will hopefully will shift their base back to india and they if they start their operating base from india it will have some advantage for the people in this country also in terms of certain employments and other benefits right then as far as agar hni ko fayda bhi diya hai to unse kuch fayda nikal bhi liya hai सर्टन बेनिफिट उसका हटा भी दिया है जैसे लाइफ इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी होती है राइट एनी लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कंपनी इफ दे टेक इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी 
where the premium is more than five lakhs in aggregate. What, what does that mean? अगर मैंने एक चार दो हजार तेईस के बाद मैंने समझो तीन चार नई पॉलिसी ली है और वो सब पॉलिसी के ऊपर मेरा सालाना पांच लाख इन टोटल एग्रीगेट मेरा इंश्योरेंस प्रीमियम है तो जब मेरे को मेच्योरिटी होगा फ्यूचर में तो वो टैक्स फ्री नहीं होगा वो टैक्सेबल होगा ये बहुत बड़ा मूव है क्योंकि जो बड़े बड़े एच होते थे वो लोग एल में या बड़ी बड़ी इंश्योरेंस कंपनी में एक लमसम सिंगल प्रीमियम भी भर देते थे या इयरली प्रीमियम भर देते थे इन क्रोर्स ऑफ रुपीस बोलते थे ठीक है पांच साठ टका मिलेगा तो चलेगा सेफ्टी भी है और जब मेच्योरिटी पे पैसा आएगा तो टैक्स फ्री होगा तो एक सेक्शन टेन टेन डी करके है जिसमें ये बेनिफिट होता था तो गवर्नमेंट ने बोला कि ये एल का जो है वो एक्चुअली रिस्क कवर के लिए है ये कोई टैक्स बेनिफिट या कोई सेविंग प्रोडक्ट्स के लिए नहीं है और ये अनड्यू बेनिफिट आपको मिल रहा है जो इसका इंटेंडेड ऑब्जेक्टिव नहीं है एंड राइटली सो एंड दे हैव रिमूव दिस पर्टिकुलर बेनिफिट तो अब ये पैसा ये रीजन की वजह से अब ये लाइफ इंश्योरेंस में नहीं जाएगा प्रोबेबली इट माइट गो टू सम अदर प्रोडक्टिव यूज इट इज अ गुड साइड देन यू नो एज फार एज लॉन्ग टर्म एंड शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन इज कंसर्न इज अ बिग रिलीफ टू द मार्केट बिकॉज मार्केट वॉज कैपिटिकल that some kind of you know increase in the rate will come or period will get extended and but nothing of that sort has happened so there is no worry as far as you know on this front is concerned correct right now as i told you these are some rates right this is the you know old rate right and these are the new rates as you can see number of slab is also reduced for hnis the above 5 crore the surcharge from 37% is brought down and their effective take tax rate was has come down from 42% to 39% right roughly 3% right 3 to 4% so in 5 crore if you calculate 4% 20 25 rupees to unka aise hi selling ho raha hai right but hna isko ek aur nuksan unhone kar diya hai aur ye nuksan kar diya hai ki wo jab koi koi capital gain karte hain right pehle kya tha ki agar maine section 54 mein ek benefit tha कि मैंने मेरा एक घर बेच दिया और मैंने घर घर बेचा और समझो मेरे को पुराना घर था और मैंने बेचा और मैंने उसको समझो पचास करोड़ में बेच साठ करोड़ में बेच दिया और मेरा उसके ऊपर कैपिटल गेन समझो पचास करोड़ है और मैं अगर वो टैक्स भरना नहीं चाहता तो मैं पूरा का पूरा पचास करोड़ मैं दूसरे घर में इन्वेस्ट कर दूंगा तो मेरा कोई टैक्स भरने का जरूरत सिमिलरली एक और सेक्शन था फिफ्टी जहां पे अदर देन हाउस से मेरा गोल्ड है मेरा शेयर से राइट से फॉर एग्जांपल आई एम एन एम्प्लॉय स्टार्टअप एंड आई गॉट एन ईसॉप एंड से आफ्टर फाइव टेन इयर्स स्टार्टअप इज अ बिग हिट एंड द वैल्यूएशन ऑफ ईसॉप इज गॉन अप एंड आई सोल्ड द ईसॉप इन द मार्केट और टू द अदर इन्वेस्टर एंड आई गेट से सिक्सटी करोड़ फिफ्टी करोड़ सिक्सटी करोड़ सेवेंटी करोड़ एंड से माई प्रॉफिट ऑन दिस इज फिफ्टी करोड़ सो इन ऑर्डर टू सेव टैक्सीज section 54f allows me before budget that i invest this money into the residential property and if i invest entire 60 crore entire sale proceeds into the residential property the capital gain tax is zero no tax now what used to happen that because of these two provisions the hnis a very rich people used to sell the property or sell the shares or gold or jewelry anything they used to earn huge money they will put that money into the real estates and after 3 years they sell that and make again a huge profit to pehle share bech ke paisa banao tax zero bharo fir usko property mein dalo usme bhi paisa banao usme bhi zero tax bharo 3 saal ke baad becho aur wapas profit karo aur wapas koi naye ghar mein dal do to ye cycle chalti thi aur real estate ka bhav badhta tha aur wo jo real estate ka luxury product mein bhav badhta tha uska ek indirect by product hota tha affordable housing mein ya house for a common man बिकॉज एक रियल एस्टेट की एक जो एक एक प्रोपोर्शन में जो ऊपर जाता है एक लग्जरी हाउस अगर 10 करोड़ में बिकता है तो नॉन लग्जरी हाउस भी प्रोपोर्शनली थोड़ा भाव वो एरिया में बढ़ जाता है तो कॉमन मैन के लिए प्रॉब्लम होता था और गवर्नमेंट के लिए सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम था ये इतने करोड़ों के अबोजों के ट्रांजेक्शन होते थे लेकिन टैक्स जीरो था तो निर्मला सीतारामन ने बोला बाबा ये अब नहीं चलेगा आप स्टार्टअप चालू करो दस लाख से वैल्यूएशन सौ करोड़ हो जाएगा और टैक्स जीरो राइट ये अब नहीं चलेगा and then they said that now under section 54 and under section 54f 
आपका गेम कितना भी हो आप जब भी भी इन्वेस्ट करोगे तो आपको आर्टिफिशियली एक लिमिट डाल दिया गया है कि आपको टैक्स एग्जामेशन दस करोड़ तक ही मिलेगा अगर आपका गेन फोर्टी करोड़ है आपने भले फोर्टी करोड़ इन्वेस्ट किया बेनिफिट सिर्फ दस करोड़ का मिलेगा पैंतीस करोड़ पे आपको टैक्स भरना पड़ेगा तो उनका बेनिफिट भी बहुत सारे हटा भी दिए That's why I say this is an exercise in balancing the budget. It's a balancing exercise this time, right? So this is a slide where just you know I just want to substantiate that under a new regime and old regime, you know what kind of you know the taxes you will pay. So these the reason for this slide is that you need to check with your chartered accountant, with your file, with your saving profile, so that which scheme is better for. Don't blindly accept any of the scheme. now the next question is creation of the job whether this budget will lead to the creation of the job let us look at this so this sector where i feel that job can be created a very first is very clear is about manufacturing sector right infrastructure sector because as we know huge capex is there so and the government is also came out in the last few years lot of pli scheme Now, for the benefit of everybody, what is the meaning of PLI scheme? It is a production link incentive, right? Government says come into India or existing Indians also invest into the PLI scheme. Come, you know, say in chemical sector, in pharma sectors, in capital goods sector, in the in lot of other sectors, you know, software sectors. They have announced PLI scheme. So you make a fresh investments, and by virtue of that, if you qualify and fulfill certain conditions. then government will give you certain incentive over and above with the profits you make on it so because of this is a big hit also in many sectors so a lot of new investments are coming into india both from outside india and within the india and that creates a good amount of employment opportunity that is the one thing we have to keep in mind second thing is about tourism sector the government has given a very good thrust on this sector in the budget and if it is really executed well right it has a tremendous potential to create job at the local levels and the thrust for and as an investor also please keep an eye on the tourism sector where in the next 3 to 5 years there are very good chance of you know creation of a good wealth in the stock market as far as this sector is concerned right in order to support the industry when you put up the project you also need a manpower and you also need skilled and semi skilled manpower so in order to support that government has also announced pm kaushal vikas yojana 4.0 that means to impart the skill hunar sikhana to impart the skill to the youth right correct and so that these skilled manpower is available to the industry my only worry here is that this experiment has been done in the past also as a part of my training to the at a various forum i also have interacted with this particular department of the government and i i regret to tell that the intentions are so good but the people who are managing this right are still you know need to improve in in terms of their thought process and the you know the uh, the execution skill because this is a very very important pillars if really india has to grow it also has to grow in terms of skill development then government has also announced you know 100 laboratories for the development of the app under 5g services now why 5g services because when it is rolled out as a nation as a whole it create lot of opportunity now all of you know that when we move from 2g to 3g 3g to 4g lot of business opportunity gets created today we have a ott platform today we have these zoom connections only because of this 4g technology right in the absence of that you know this would not have been possible so that 4g technology has created an you know unimaginable opportunity which you have never thought of in the past now 5g can do much more wonders right in terms of you know opportunities new business opportunities government has realized that and in order to encourage the youth and the it professionals and the startup they wanted to develop 100 labs for app development and that is where also a lot of opportunity lies both for the entrepreneurs and the upcoming people into the it sector for the jobs so keep an eye on that uh, very good idea to watch 
the transport sector has got a big big boost model. this thing as you can see right in this right from social welfare to the you know uh, this in transport get a huge amount of uh, this huge amount of allocations so as we see transport both railway and the road has got a huge huge capex and that is where you know we have to talk about now let us look at this budget from the perspective of the investor one of the sector where there is a very good opportunity is agriculture sector right because not only in this budget but even in the last budget also government has talked about this and they are very very serious because if india has to grow the rural sector has to grow because majority of the population lives still into the rural area and majority of the labor say more than 55 percent of the population still dependent on agri sectors right so government has continued their policy of the last budget even in this budget also and they have increased the credit target to 20 trillion now what do you mean by credit target credit means loan kisan ko jo loan pradan karni hai right uska target 20 trillion rupees pe leke gaye now there is a flip side also because as we know at every five years when election comes there is a loan mela comes in our country or sub log state government central government kisan ka loan maaf kar dete correct so there is a flip side to also right so but if it is really done with the good intention if it is really implemented with the good intention then it has a tremendous potential for the development of the agri sectors in our country because apmc law has come in this country where you know the requirement of farmer to sell directly only to the intermediaries has gone credit available to the farmer utilized in the right manner and farmer actually repay that right if that things can happen then a lot of ancillary industry in and around the agriculture like food processing units like your contract farming like your cold storage facility a lot of stuffs can come in and around which is ancillary to agriculture into the rural area and the semi-rural area which has a tremendous potential to increase the income of the farmer and the rural people and each again can lead to the you know aspirational demand from this sector for the white goods consumer goods two-wheeler four-wheeler kitchen appliances we even can't imagine there will be a there will be an explosion of the consumption in this country so keep an eye on this particular you know how it is actually implemented then ev sector right so electronic vehicle right so you know here also you know you will see the lot of thrust has been given there is a fame policy announced by the government in before the budget in the last two three years and nitin gadkar is very vocal about this right so the government is actually looking for you know some battery storage system and some funding is also provided for that right they have also waived the import duty right on certain goods and machines which are used for manufacturing of the lithium ion cell even yesterday's or today's newspaper talk a very good news about a huge reserves of you know the lithiums and this thing found in the jammu and kashmir and these are some of the good news because these are some of the long term mega trend right and when india already have announced their intention into the cop26 the paris agreements and to have the net carbon credit zero right by 2017 where this ev and other you know green energy play very important role so from the investor perspective on the ev sides player hawkeye especially the companies who are manufacturing the electronic vehicles or who are in the value chain and manufacturing the storage battery or electrical batteries all right in two wheeler also there are a lot of companies are there there are only one company in two wheeler that is a tvs uh, otherwise uh, you know all this company like ola and all these things they are in the unlisted space but keep an eye today or tomorrow they might come into the listed space and this is the sector for the long term right keep an eye on this then defense sector right no need to give more importance no you know it goes without saying that it's a very very important looking at the geopolitical situation in the country what has happened after afghanistan then what is happening in the ukraine the tension in the taiwan you know any time china can attack and and the credibility of the us has already gone down after the uh, afghanistan and the ukraine right every country in the world want to become self reliant in the defense so the indian government right and the huge huge allocation 5.44 trillion dollar keep an eye on some of the good defense sector stocks 
from the long term perspective like these are not the recommendation just the for the education purpose or for the study purpose the stocks like hindustan aeronautics bharat dynamics bel mtar data pattern there are and one more sector is emerging uh, which is a set, uh, space technology and the space technology both in defense and outside defense and within the defense going to play a huge huge role and which is a very very dark horse this still the story is not out into the public domain if you are a very very you know skilled full investor start tracking and, and studying this company in the set in the space technology and uh, there huge huge opportunity lies ahead for a life changing wealth creation opportunity i will underline the word life changing wealth creation opportunity right because it is not india it is across the world the importance of defense has gone up national security has gone up geopolitical instability in many part of the world right it only hints towards one thing that aapko apni security ke liye atmar nirbhar banna padega kisi aur ke upar zyada bharosa nahi rakh sakte yeah then affordable housing sector right yeah, of course this is one of the flagship scheme sabse zyada dhandera iska pita jata hai 2020 tak fir 2022 tak sabko ghar dena hai sasta ghar dena hai right then allocation 66 with respect to 79000 crore right targeting bottom of the pyramid it is if it is implemented correctly the huge employment opportunity as an investor keep an eye on the real estate sector right and as a consequence is a proxy play keep an eye on the cement sector keep an eye on the steel sector and i on then after the house the next thing is consumption that is a paint and furniture sector and to some extent automobile sector these if this played well then all this sector connected with the housing will get benefited right tourism sector of course there is no need to talk much about it because already covered that but what is specific thing in this budget 50 destination government of india want to develop right right both from, from the physical and virtual connectivity point of view right lot of potential for local job creation opportunity there are very good companies in this sector like you know like a thomas cook rate gain those who are playing in and around this tourism sector right where there is a very good opportunity from the long term perspective to create a wealth right so that is the end of me from my side and uh, i hope i have added some value to your uh, knowledge and done the justice but happy to take a question if you have it yeah thank you very much thank you sir really have demystify all the budget 2023 24 so if we go forward with the question the first question is what are your thoughts on the budget provision for the startup sector and how do you see it impacting our business in the future okay now say the for startup sector if you see before budget also please understand india is one of the place where a very good startup ecosystem has been developed we are featuring into top 3 top 5 nations in the in the world in this budget they have given certain benefits for startup in terms of angel tax if your startup is registered with the dpitt that is department of promotion of industrial investments and this thing then if you raise equity where the price is more than the fair market value and if you are registered with dpitt then there is no angel tax which is a very good step but one second side of coin is it is not easy to get registered with dpitt a lot of conditions to be fulfilled but of course that is also required to ensure genuineness if you leave, if you leave this area loose then a lot of loopholes will come up and uh, money laundering will happen but for a genuine startup right there is no angel tax as per this particular provision yep. yes sir so there's one question in chat box sending the money abroad will draw 20% tax or tds which can be adjusted in taxable income okay okay very good question uh, i think soban sava he has asked right right yes yeah. sir so yeah thank you soban bhai soban bhai is a very good friend so see please let us first understand the full framework in india 
there is something called LRSK, that is liberalized remittance announced by the RBI. What is the limit under that scheme? Every year, Indian citizen can send two and a half lakh dollar abroad. Dai lakh dollar up India ke bahar bech sakte. Or matlab kariban do crore rupiah hota hai. Agar asi rupiah ka rate lete ho. Now government says that when you send this dollar outside India, first check the purpose of it. Either you send for education purpose for your child, you send for say some other purpose like medical or third you send it for some other purpose. Now when you send money, you are not earning any income, right? Hence no TDS. But government says that we are not talking about TDS, we are talking about TCS, tax collection at source. Means agar maan do mere ko ek crore rupiah bahar bheechna hai. और अगर मैं मेरे बच्चे की पढ़ाई के लिए एजुकेशन के लिए बेचता हूं तो मेरे को और 5 लाख रुपया टीसीएस बैंक को देना पड़ेगा तो वो जो 5 लाख है वो बैंक को दूंगा और बैंक गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया को देगी और गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया जब मैं मेरा रिटर्न भरूंगा तब वो 5 लाख का मुझे क्रेडिट मेरे टैक्स में देगी और मेरा जो टैक्स लायबिलिटी उतना कम हो जाए अगर मेरा कोई टैक्स नहीं है तो मुझे रिफंड मिल जाए अगर मैं मेडिकल के लिए देता हूं तो भी सेम 5% परसेंट अप्लाई होता है बट मैं और कोई पर्पस के लिए देता हूं अब और पर्पस क्या हो सकता है या तो मैं बाहर घूमने जा रहा हूं मैं ओवरसीज ट्रैवल करने जा रहा हूं स्पेन पोर्टुगल यूएस अमेरिका कनाडा घूमने जा रहा हूं वर्ल्ड टूर पे जा रहा हूं या मेरा इंडिया से मैं मेरे कोई फॉरन अकाउंट में पैसा ट्रांसफर कर रहा हूं राइट तो गवर्नमेंट बोलता है अगर आप एक करोड़ ट्रांसफर कर रहे हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो वो आपको 20 परसेंट एक्स्ट्रा बैंक को देना पड़ेगा मतलब आप 20 लाख बैंक को दो एक करोड़ आपका समझो ट्रांसफर हो जाएगा बाकी का जो 20 लाख है वो बैंक गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया को देगा इनकम टैक्स को देगा इनकम टैक्स जब आप रिटर्न भरेंगे तब आपको सेट ऑफ दैट इज दॉ ऑफ द एल आर एस सो रूपेश भाई आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आस्क इन दिस सो दिस इज सेम एप्लीकेबल वेन इट कम्स टू दी वेन यू इन्वेस्ट इन दी इक्विटी और global equity market or global debt market same thing will be applied over there uh, it should apply it should apply because it will come into the other other categories unless the clarification comes for that okay and it is applicable from when first april or first july it is uh, see the law is applicable since i think one or two years before the only thing is rate has increased this time Okay, okay. But Thank for you. let me tell you, having you ask about investments, let me tell you, it is always good uh, to invest into the foreign market through ETF available in India to avoid this kind of problem, and also to ensure safety of your capital and the you know repatriation of the capital. But then you don't have much of country risk or relatively less. Okay. Thank you, Rupesh. So yeah, don't way. invest. Don't invest directly into the foreign market without consulting your tax experts. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so yeah. we will we will end this session by an ending note. So thank you, Rupesh, sir, for sharing your insights and expertise on the 2023-24 budget with us today. Your perspective and experience have provided valuable insights into the budget impact on the financial industry. We appreciate the time you have taken to speak with us and share your thoughts on the subject. This has been a truly enlightening experience, and I'm sure our audience has learned a lot from this conversation. I would like to thank you once again and wish you all best in your future endeavors. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to Rotary Club and Rotary Club and all the participants. Right. Thanks a lot. Bye bye and take care. Thank so you, we would sir. like to Nawal, we would like to thank the Rotary Rotary Club, the Goldhatch Foundation as well as the Business Me Charcha Group for joining us in this beautiful presentation. And thank you, Nawal, for organizing all the uh, taking all yes. the efforts. And Rupesh, by again, as always, you like a mentor coming to us and teaching us a very. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye, the world. Bye. Yes, sir.